Lini energy can pour right through you if you open to it. But that has to happen in a way that serves you and that is organic and natural. So hi, my name is Jody Dean and I help you with your spiritual awakening process navigating it's embodying your soul purpose and finding yourself authentically expressing who you really are so just really being yourself and in this video i'm going to be talking about actually my main let's say spiritual awakening process that happened when i was 24 and it was an event that has a before and an after and I feel immensely blessed that this happened for me. Um, it wasn't without effort. <laughs> it wasn't without looking for it. I was looking for it. I was searching for it. I was searching for myself. I was on a deep dive journey of self-discovery. And I was on the path and had been since I was 11 years old when a light went on and I had this insatiable curiosity to learn about self-awareness, spiritual awakening, uh, the mysteries of life, the deepest mysteries, metaphysics, healing, etc. Um, so let's just jump right to it. I was in Pune in India in the state of Maharashtra and I was staying at and around the Osho Commune International as it was called back then and it was a I was on a big journey at the time I was there maybe um, four months already and I um, have been doing different processes and meditation uh, retreats and um, really exploring myself and really going deep. And I met a friend who I'd met a couple of years previously there um, where, when I'd taken sannyas and changed my name um, to Viridi, my sannyas name. And that friend I said so what are you up to these days you know and she said to me well um, I I'm a fully I'm fully realized and I uh, I'm I share I spend some time sharing with people every day and I was like huh and she was like yeah I'm um, yeah I found myself I found the truth and I was like whoa and I was like, well, I mean, it sounds really nice and everything, um, but uh, I'm worried that you might be delusional. Um, I actually kind of said that. Um, and that that you're just kind of mm, in some kind of self-hypnosis or trance or ego journey or something. Um, and... She said to me, okay, no, that's fine. You totally understand, you know, I, I was the same. And uh, she said, okay, well, just, she said, do one thing. Look into my eyes. If I was delusional, I would be miserable, right? Because delusion is, it's distortion. It's not truth. And she said, look into my eyes. Do you see any misery? So I looked into her eyes and there was only joy, there was only love, there was only truth. There was no misery. I was not look I realized in that moment I was not looking at a miserable, sick, unhappy or anything else person. And I was like, Oh, wow. Okay. And so I said, Great, okay, yeah, I'm curious. I'll come. I'll come to your to your sharing and then I think it was that day or the next day I showed up at her apartment with her partner and uh, there's a couple of other people and the 
the thing just intensified so from the initial curiosity there there was this yeah just this kind of pure flow happening it's the best way to describe it and she was uh, available to it she was allowing it and it was just the most magical beautiful thing um, to witness that I'd never witnessed that before um, I'd been looking for that but I'd never witnessed it in a human in a person an actual person that I knew as well and I instantly felt this transmission of love and truth um, through her through her sharing um, in the, s the small circle that we were there was you know four or five of us and it was just you know time stopped it was phenomenal it was just beyond words it was truthful it was real reality I met reality um, of infinite love and So I surrendered and because it was just like this huge yes and this huge relief. Oh my God, it's so simple. So, 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 so simple. It is the most simple thing. The most. And so that surrender happened and my my mind judging evaluating analytical rational mind calmed down and went quiet and so then I was just open to this flow to this love to this truth and um, afternoon turned to evening and I was still there and I started, I was welcome to stay there and I started to have the feeling of energy just pouring in through me, through my crown, through my hands, my palms and through my feet. It's the same that I experience now. And it was pouring in um, like a current, electric current but felt welcome, felt warm. It wasn't an alarm, it was an emergence. It was an allowance, an allowing. And I was just in total surrender. I was in total surrender. And it was the most wonderful thing to allow that as I reclaimed who I am, as I reclaimed my power, as I reclaimed truth, all resistance stopped, ceased, and circulation happened, current happened, flow intensified, a roaring flow was happening, and nothing can prepare you for it nothing can really closely describe it it's you know we're just we're lost in the realm of words when we we attempt to explain or describe or depict these kinds of events and phenomena so i was there i was being taken care of as this happened and I stayed still and um, oh yeah one thing during the kind of sharing the satsang as it was called the meeting um, we shared some fruit and nuts dried fruit and nuts which is really nice um, thing to just kind of share around as we <laughs> met and uh, so yeah by this time it got quite late and 
so it was felt like the right thing to have some food so some food was ordered for me <laughs> and um, it was uh, suggested that food might be grounding so I I ate the food and it was grounding and I felt a bit more in my body and able because ultimately I was going to make my way home and um, where I was staying and uh, so that eventually happened I eventually said goodbye with a thousand thank yous and 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 went on my merry way mind completely blown heart wide open energy field wide open kundalini wide open and in absolute bliss total bliss of knowing of truth and being and went home went slept and then the next day I got sick <laughs> sick felt unwell and I was then I had to stay in bed and just like I thought I had some kind of bug um, from I don't know the food the water something so I just had the runs and felt really low and no energy and um, fluey and I see clearly now that that was reaction resistance from my psyche, subconscious, unconscious, the, and also potentially transmutation as well. The, the body transmutes what the psyche isn't able or doesn't have the capacity to in the moment as a mirror of the soul and so I was still in this knowing and this presence a um, couple of days later I'm walking through the ashram I'm kind of well enough to walk around so that's okay but you know low energy and yeah, feeling unwell and uh, and I meet her I meet her in a passageway um, and I say hey how are you and I said oh I'm, I'm sick I don't feel well I'm just you know not and she's like does that change who you are does that change what you are what do you know uh, and a quarter of me was no, and the other three quarters was, well, yeah, it's changed my experience. <laughs> and checking back on that now and the several times I've done that, it was, it's the same. It doesn't change who I am. and didn't change who I am of course it can't change who I am and what I know the truth of who we all are and the body was having an experience there were sensations um, there was change there was shift there was difference there were variables at play and those were sensations I was not enjoying. <laughs> I was not loving. <laughs> and that's okay. And it uh, subsided after a couple of days more. And who I was hadn't changed and am um, hasn't changed. And for the next roughly two weeks from that initial wow 
I was in a state of bliss. Satchitananda is how it's known in in um, Sanskrit, in the Vedic tradition. Sat is truth, chit is consciousness, and Nanda is bliss. So, truth, consciousness, bliss. Which is an effect of knowing, of union, of merging, surrender. It's one way to look at it, yeah. And then it gently, very gently, began to subside over the weeks and months that followed. So during the couple of weeks, I had a couple of close friends who were like, oh, Jody's enlightened now. Because they could palpably feel and see the radiance and see the knowing and the truth and the joy and the light but I slowly began to decouple if you will with the knowing as time progressed and I would say in some ways that I wasn't sitting in that knowing and that truth and that is also an effect of the mad monkey mind if you want the the ancestral patterns the unhealed traumas all the dynamics within my psyche that were still in effect um, and I still believed them I had not transcended them I had not transformed them so there these aspects then came out to play again and so there was then more identification with them it's hard to break the habit of a lifetime hard but not impossible and so I went after my time in India and Sri Lanka afterwards I went to um, back to India for a bit I ended up back in um, Britain um, in the summer and staying at my father's place in Jersey and trying to integrate all of that and it was hard, definitely hard um, because it's like what nothing else compares not even a tiny bit to who we are and yes there was still that active knowing and that awareness and that awakened sense but it was also dissipated because I wasn't checking every day I wasn't doing what I love I wasn't embodied I wasn't allowing fully who I am um, and you who may be watching this may be in a similar 
situation. And uh, I, on one level, I had to live out these aspects and life more to experiment, to experience. Um, at that point, I went back to university and finished a degree that I was doing in creative arts. And as time went on, it also got kind of more difficult and compartmentalized in a way. So difficult to integrate and compartmentalize that kind of spiritual knowing with the, the me identity of me in society and me having a career and me being an adult person in the world and with all the conditioning and programming, cultural and social. And it was definitely a challenge to navigate that, I'm not gonna lie. And I did have community, I sought out community. Um, some who I'd met in India who are now, were now in the UK and others who'd been on similar journeys or were at least on the spiritual path and practitioners of some kind of spiritual practice. Um, so through workshops, um, festivals, gatherings in the countryside in Britain. And this was a great reminder for now as well of how key it is to have your community of like hearts and like minds who hold you and encourage you and support you as you support them on your path in your flowering and flourishing and in your awakening it's so key it's so key i can't um, begin to emphasize enough how key it is because as a human being you're so we're so vulnerable we're so affected by that which is around us and the prevailing ideas and thoughts and behaviors and beliefs and customs and cultures. And so now I'm all about creating your own culture, customs, beliefs that are in line with what you know to be true, your truest values, your truest knowing. Because we are creators. You are a creator, even though you may not realize it yet. And it's very profound. It's extremely profound who and what we are. So there have been more experiences and openings along the way since then. But I wanted to focus in on this one in this video to, yeah, put a magnifying glass up to it blow it up, zoom in. And also just say to anyone out there who's had an awakening experience, revelation, epiphany like this, that be kind to yourself if you're not there anymore if you feel so far away from you, that thing, that experience, that knowing. It is who you are. So you can't not be it. You just might temporarily be identifying with something else, some other things that might prove to be insubstantial when you really check them out and look, investigate, get curious about the veracity of them, the truth. So that's the encouragement here. And 
The truth is always in the now. The real is always in the now. It's nowhere else. So you can always come back to now. And wake up again, <laughs> deeper. Disidentifying with the noise. Disidentifying with the drama trauma. <laughs> and realizing, wow, what a spectrum of experience. What a smorgasbord of potentialities and plays and game that life is and coming back always to to self to knowing to who we are to now to presence to kindness with this kindness creating ever more spaciousness creates compassion for self, for others, and deepening in the knowing, sitting and resting in the knowing of who we really are. And watching the joy as it arises when there is that clarity. Taking a breath. <laughs> Being kind to self. Finding your community. Co-creating community. Creating the life that is aligned with who you know yourself truly and deeply to be. Living your purpose. Awakening to the real. Letting go of all that does not serve. Being courageous. Bold. Standing in what you know. Committing to the path, to truth, to love. being a beacon by virtue of all <laughs> the above being present in your reality so hope that's been helpful hope you enjoyed this story time I'm curious if you have questions around this or if you have an experience reflection that you would like to share then you're welcome to do so most welcome in the comments and if you enjoyed this video please like share it with someone who you might you feel might enjoy get some inspiration some relief and please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed if you feel resonant you'd like to see more of this content more of these stories, know more about me, understand more about yourself, ultimately, cultivate habits of presence, of kindness, of bravery, of creativity, of care, of authenticity. So, I'm Jody Dean, and if you would like some assistance, support, help in your ascension journey, in your spiritual awakening process, in being all you can be, in being yourself, in activating your purpose, in living a, a truly soul embodied life, activating your vision, getting clarity with who you really are dropping the procrastination stepping into courage and acceleration then book a call 20 minute accelerator call it's still free right now gifted so the invitation is there 
should you wish to explore deeper, further, and reduce the suffering and turn up the joy, the love, and the power. All right, blessings. Thank you so much. See you in the next video. Bye for now.